forever and always. You've come to the right place. I am your brother, the mighty, mighty, mighty. Uh, Angel Snub Nub 7. Your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. I just wanted to make this very short video while I had this thought. I don't know why I'm 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 getting tongue twied. <laughs> See tongue twied. I don't know why I'm getting so tongue tied lately. Probably because I really am not in the mood to make a video, but I feel as though I have to make one while the thought is on my mind. And I want to just present this thought to you. Man, it is hot today. But uh, on this busy, let ye, that's me, get busy. I want to address this crap that I hear all the time. All this arrogant bragging coming from Caucasian people and others. They always say or make a claim. That they are so hard working. Oh, the Mexicans. The, see, I'm so tongue tied. Ugh. The Mexicans are so hard working. The Chinese, the Japanese, and of course, we are uh, white people. We are all so hard working. And even some of the Africans and other people from around the earth that come to America to find a better place to live. We are so hard working. And the only lazy person is the so-called Negro, the descendants of slaves in America. You know, they say these ludicrous, stupid things all the time. You mean to tell me that there are no lazy people among white folks? There are no lazy Mexicans or Africans or all this? This is nonsense. There is no hard working, more hard working people than black folks who you think built this nation for free. And if they or their children decide for some reason they want to take a break from hard labor, why can't they after making you super rich, super wealthy? And this you know. And now that it's done, you want to claim like you so hard working. You do this and you have so you have this work ethic. There are lazy people no matter where you go. You can go to China, there are lazy people. There are lazy white folks in America, in Europe. There are lazy folks everywhere. Not just one particular so-called race of people. You want to claim it's all black folks, these descendants of slaves, the so-called Negro, African Americans are so lazy. Then you always forget to mention that you can work hard all your life. And this is for the majority of people in this country. You can work hard all your life. Never miss a day at work. And you die poor and broke. That's a fact. So explain that to me. So what's the sense of working hard. And you don't get nothing in return. Hard work. The African. The uh, Chinese or the, or the Arabs or, or whomever. The Mexicans. Whoever come over here. They work hard and they become successful. But it's not them as a people. You don't see this as a people because it is the same. You can work hard all your life and still have nothing. But you know when it comes to so-called immigrants or these illegal aliens. Now, you want to brag that everybody is hard working except black folks. Now, if the Arab or the African or the Mexican or the Japan, Japanese or Asian, whoever, 
these other people that come to America, they become so successful. But black folks, nothing happened. Oh, but black folks, we've been here the longest, but we have not progressed. But yet it's still, you don't know or you don't tell the true story of the obstacles placed and the things that black folks have to have had to and still deal with. You just want to ignore that. These persons, you help them. Many of them get help from this government through different programs or whatever. And many of these programs that the Africans and Mexicans and all these other foreign people that come to America, they benefit from the civil rights movement. They benefit from the struggle of black folks. Oh, but that is totally ignored. Including some of y'all women. Much of the women's rights, much of what you have gained is because of the struggle for human rights or civil rights by the African so-called American of this nation. But if the African and the Arab and the Mexicans and the Japanese, all these successful people, if they are so hard working, then how come your hard work did not pay off in Mexico or Japan or somewhere in Africa? All these places y'all run to, you had to jump on a boat, travel thousands and thousands of miles to come here and beg white folks for a job. White folks, you had to beg white folks for an opportunity. You ain't nothing but a high class beggar. You have the nerve to call somebody lazy. You so hard working, how come you couldn't make it from where you came from? Don't you be talking about somebody. When you talk about somebody, make sure your own house is clean. How you gonna talk about somebody and your house is dirty? I'm not gonna let you get away with it. And that's why y'all stay the hell away from me and you don't debate or argue with me because I know who you are. I know what has happened. You so hard working, but yet and still, and then you become so Americanized that you don't take none of your success back to your nation and help build your own nation. You become and betray, you betray Mexico, you betray the African nation you came from, then you become you become a white people butt licker. You like to lap, lap, lap. Ooh, you love to lick feces. So you don't impress me when you call black folks lazy or with all these names that you come at us with. You don't impress me because you ain't a nobody. Now to bring this little talk to conclusion, I want to aim this and direct this uh, these last few minutes to those who, these Caucasian people who think they are so great, hardworking. If you're so hardworking, why did your forefathers need slaves for over 300 years? And then after slavery was over, you still gave underpaid black folks to serve you. But you so hard working. And if you so hard working, Mr. White Man, Mr. Racist White Man, Mrs. Racist White Woman, if y'all so hard working, then how come so many of your people are homeless on the street? How come many of your men don't pay the white woman child support? How come so many of you have become dope fiends and drunkards? So many of y'all are now collecting food stamps. Food stamps, since everybody, so many people are using food stamps nowadays, nobody don't even trip off of it no more. There is no more embarrassment because many, 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 White people are on food stamps. You so hard working. The white man is so hard working. But when you retire, you need a social security check. I thought you was hard working. Don't hard work supposed to bring success? So what do you need social security for? And then you have rich white folks that need a bailout. But you, your hard work 
you working so hard, you can't bail yourself out. You need to go to the government to bail out Wall Street, to bail out the car companies, the airline companies, McDonald's maybe. But but y'all also hard working. So you might be hard working, but y'all apparently must not be that smart. Oh, but y'all have a high IQ too. I remember that. Y'all have a high IQ. Well, if you have such a high IQ and hard working, then that should never have been an economic recession because y'all too smart and hard working for that. Right? <laughs> you have white children going to school out of motels. White men and women Cheating on their taxes. But y'all so hard working. Oh. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I am the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub 7. I am here to continue the defense of those of whom are the descendants of slaves born in America. I am defending my client against the false accusations, in fact, slanderous and libelous accusations by the racist, not all, but some of the racist Caucasian people of America charging my client again, who are the descendants of slaves born in America, of being lazy, being trifling, and taking advantage of the American welfare system. I would like to present this argument to this most non-biased jury. The welfare system, and I want you to correct me if I am in error, but the welfare system that we know of it origins or it comes from out of the New Deal program started or created by Franklin Delano Roosevelt during what we call the Great Depression. And the welfare system, many different forms of welfare, this came about and it was a benefit to white people that were suffering. During this period of time, although I am very sure some black people benefit from the welfare system, many black people was already used to great suffering. They were used to not having anything. Many of them were sharecroppers. So even though they might not have a lot of shoes or couldn't put gas in the car. Black people were eating. They were on these like plantations. So they were able to eat. But many white people who lived in these cities and different places, they were suffering because of the economic hardship of America at that time. So to bring, so to bring relief to the white people of this nation, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the Congress, the leaders of this nation, created what was called the New Deal, a gang of different welfare programs, different types of programs to create jobs and, and so forth for white people. They were not taking into consideration dark people. In fact, during this period of time, even though white people were suffering, they still found time to lynch and castrate black people. This was done, this welfare system was created solely for white people. Then as time goes on, of course, as you know, black folks, because we were called citizens, many of us began to take advantage of these different programs, and then before we were able to do that, take advantage of some of these programs, the white man who is racist to black folks 
but he also do not like his woman. They live in this Christian society where the woman is expected to be at home and take care of her children. Of course, after the Great Depression followed World War II. And then you had many men who were the head of these households who died in war. And since the white man did not want his woman to work, he created this welfare system. This, uh, what is, I forgot what it's technically called for dependent, A for dependent children, something to that effect. So the white woman, since they knew she had no skills, she could not take care of herself really unless she humbled herself and do the jobs like black women were doing, being maids and servants. They did not want the white woman to do that. So they put her and let her stay at home and gave her welfare. Now, out of the New Deal, I believe also was created this system called Social Security, Disability, and all, the other, all these other types of welfare programs. Don't, Social Security is welfare. It's welfare to senior citizens because you are no longer able to work and blah, blah, blah. So the government decides to help you during the last part of your life. It is welfare. It is charity. Disability is the same thing. It is charity. It is to help those who cannot help themselves. It is welfare. Welfare is someone is benefiting from the work of others. This is a charity. Okay? Now, welfare is the bailout. The bailout of Saks, the bailout of Wall Street, the billions of dollars given to all these white businesses, the airlines in the 1980s, and even up to date, the car companies, this is welfare. Very few pay this back because it's welfare. But we don't talk about welfare. We don't talk about that welfare. We don't talk about, if you look at the, the majority of the American debt, it is basically debt to welfare. It is all your tax money is going to these uh, programs of benefit. Not to this, this uh, not, a whole, not much of it is going to these children and to education, a vast majority of it is going to the senior citizens. And of course, you have a large part of the American debt going to the military. But welfare is someone who is benefiting from someone else's labor. Now, it is a charity. You're not supposed to live on it. You're not supposed to make it a way of life. And you don't have to pay it back. As you see, Wall Street and all these, and Fannie Mae and all these companies is not paying the American government nothing back because it's welfare. But y'all don't talk about that. You want to try to paint welfare black like it is all black folks. And white people are the majority on welfare. White people are the majority of the people who benefit from welfare. This is a fallacy. This is a lie created by the white Caucasian media to try to paint welfare like it's all black. Black people for a long time are used to suffering. And even if black people are taking advantage of welfare, it is the white man, it is the racist white people, you allow that. You allow that so you can talk about somebody. You allow them to take advantage of welfare or abuse the system because you need somebody to talk about. Somebody to degrade and make mockery of. You do that on purpose. You should not even allow these people to live on welfare. You do that so you can have a class of people to make mockery of, a class of people who you know are ignorant that you can manipulate and use and exploit. And that's 
the situation that we're living in right now. But again, you don't want to talk about the welfare given to large corporations and the senior, senior citizens. White people benefit from welfare. And the ultimate welfare that the great United States, the, the great United States of America has benefited from. Welfare is the benefit from others' labor. You practice slavery, black commercial slavery. That is your first experience with welfare. You live off the backs of black people for over 400 years. The little welfare that some black folks get, single mothers or whoever, whatever we get out of this economy, that's nothing compared to the millions and billions and trillions of dollars that this nation made off free slave labor for over 400 years. I'm not talking about for 30 days, 30 years. You made welfare, you made slavery a way of life for over 400 years. How can you have the audacity? How can you have the nerve to talk about somebody on welfare when your country was built on welfare? The only thing you did was use your energy to murder Mexicans, to murder Native American people, to murder blacks, and force people to work for you. Thus, you are the first welfare recipient. You are the true welfare recipient. So I'm bringing this case to this jury. So I want you to see that these black people are not guilty. In fact, they are victims of libelous, slanderous claims because the true welfare recipient is racist Caucasian people of America and they have been that way ever since black folks have been here. Welfare is the is the benefit. Somebody is benefiting from the labor of somebody else. And you did this. Racist white people of America, racist Caucasian people of America have been doing this and done this and made welfare a way of life for over 400 years. Then they also terrorized the people of whom they were exploiting. They raped the black man. They raped the black woman. They exploit their children. They sick dogs on us. Sprayed us with fire hoses. Castrate us, lynched us at will. Not only did you benefit from our labor, but you terrorized us. And now you're talking about somebody terrorizing you when you were the first terrorist. As long as you were the one doing the terrorizing, you wouldn't have said. But now that somebody bringing you a little fear, giving you a dose of your own medicine, now you want to cry. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please find my client not guilty of these false accusations and please Come down with a verdict to reward in the countersuit. Reward my clients, the descendants of slaves born in America. Reward us for our pain and suffering in this wicked and welfare getting land. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth. Angel Snub Nub 7. We are going to be casual today, just for a few minutes. I just wanted to, to uh, bring up or talk about the subject. Um, the topic that I've chosen is basically, I've noticed on YouTube, there are many brothers and sisters who appear on YouTube and they make videos. Many of them are celebrity seekers trying to bring attention to themselves. And I want to say there's nothing wrong with us wanting attention and want somebody to listen to what we have to say. 
But when we come into a public forum like YouTube, or if we are out in the street, whenever we become public, whenever we go out into the public arena, there is going to be opposition. President Barack Obama, of course, is the so-called leader or the figurehead that they point us to of this nation. And Barack Obama faces negative publicity every day. Barack Obama faced negative publicity when he was a senator, prior to him being a senator, you face negative publicity anytime you come up out of your house. Matter of fact, some of us, we face negative publicity in our house. In our houses. <laughs> Excuse me, a little tongue tied. We face negative publicity from our brothers and sisters and cousins and fathers and mothers. So as soon as we come into this life, there is negative publicity. But of course, when we come on YouTube and Facebook and, and all these, or we become an entertainer, we want to rap, we want to sing, or a baseball player, whenever we come out into the public arena, you become a target of public scrutiny. And when we do this, we are so happy when everything is good. I'm sure that it is nice when Barack Obama here, oh, you're such a great president, you're such a great man, and we love praise. Y'all love praise. Oh, how beautiful your hair is. Oh, your skin is so pretty. Oh, I love those boots you're wearing. We love publicity. We love good publicity, and we eat it up a lot. But then, see, Michael Jackson and Prince and Beyonce and whoever, everybody in the public arena, just like you have good publicity, you're going to get bad publicity. And the same forces that raise you up will do the same, use the same energy, have the same vigor to bring you down. And that's something I noticed black people the so-called descendants of slaves in America, we don't like that. We can't handle bad publicity. We, we are quick to block we, because we can't defend our position. No matter how civil, I'm not talking about blocking people who are idiots, people who are rude. I'm talking about you block people who just ask simple questions. They get on your nerves because you don't have the answers. So you block them and they get on your nerves. And then you have a certain message that you're trying to tell. But of course, if you begin to talk about white folks, then the white people begin to flag your channel. The white people begin to spread how racist and hate feel that you are. You can't handle the pressure of being out in the public, but you want the praise. Do you know why? That this ministry, the Realities Temple on Earth ministry, do you know why I have suffered over 60? Get it now. Last time I talked to you, it was probably 50, but now it is 5, 1, 60. Over 60 channels, false flag and terminated. Do you know why? It is because those who are out here that love to be negative towards you, they have found out that Brother Talik is not negative publicity and don't bother me. In fact, I feed all the of off of it and I thrive off of it. Now I want to make something very clear. This does not mean that negative publicity and somebody's trying to smear my name and trying to talk bad about me 
or what I say, that does not bother me. Nobody wants to be called names. Nobody wants to be hollered vulgarities and profanities. Nobody wants that type of thing. Nobody wants to be called a racist and a hater and ugly and <laughs> whatever. No one wants to, wants to, uh, I mean, come on. But at the same time, I know what I'm facing coming into the public arena. So instead of viewing negative publicity, negative actions, name calling as something that is negative, then I spin it and make it gold and I make it something that's positive for me. Give me the energy to continue to do and say what I need to say and do. And my enemies, those who hate me, those who despise me, they have no choice, they have no other option except to try to terminate and silence the voice through cyber assassination. And that's what you see, cyber assassination. And I even thrive off of that because I fight even harder and then I go places where I've never been before so the only thing they've done is help me to spread what I want to talk about. So you just made things worse for yourself. I thank you very much because if it was not for the false flaggers, I would not have taken advantage of, of Facebook and the realities tip on earth on daily motion. It's going close to 25,000 views and steady climbing. Many Facebook friends have joined Angel Snuffed Up 7 on daily motion. And then we have MySpace. So I want to thank the haters. I want to thank you because you made me stronger by being negative. But see, I want to say something to y'all who are cowards. When you run away from these, see, I run to the false flaggers. I run to the haters. I run to them. When you run away and show them that you're weak, they're going to keep chasing you. Just like a dog would chase a person because they can, dogs can sense fear. So they chase you and will keep chasing you until you decide to fight back. Then that dog might leave you alone because the only thing the dog was doing was enjoying himself chasing you because that dog knew that you feared him or her, male or female dog, whatever. Don't you know when you bring truth, when you are trying to awaken the minds of black people, you live in a world and a society they don't want us, they do not want our minds to be awakened. There's going to be opposition. So you should embrace that. What happens is you cannot handle negative publicity because you're not as strong, you're not as, as intelligent as you thought that you were. So they break you down. So you become angry at those who bring you certain questions. You become angry at those who challenge your opinion because you thought you had it going on and you really don't. So you get angry because they expose you for the loser that you really are. Truth. You should, if you bring truth, you should expect opposition and be ready for the onslaught of negativity. So it don't bother me. I feed off of it. And what is even more sad is that some of these in the so-called black YouTube community, as soon as they begin to get false flag, as soon as somebody start talking about them negative and calling them names, they begin to water down what they was talking about because they can't handle 
the false flagging, they can't handle the negativity. People like you don't even need to be on YouTube anyway. You're too weak. The black man and woman, the descendants of slaves in America, need strong people to stand up because it was strong forces that put us in the condition that we're in. So it's going to take strong mind and body and soul in order to withstand the onslaught of negativity and hatred from the enemies who don't want to see the rise of the black man and woman in America. Because with your rise, brothers and sisters, with our rise means somebody's fall. And if white is the opposite of black, and if black is to rise, that means white has to fall. And see, that's the key that some of you don't understand. That's why they cannot allow you to learn who you are. That's why they can't allow you to think a certain way because you will begin to rise. And all their lies, talking about we have a low IQ, talking about we can't do this and that, we're lazy and trifling, all their lies will be exposed because on our rise, quite evident, it'll, we will show that all that was a fallacy. So with that said and done, brothers and sisters, instead of getting angry at negative publicity, we should embrace it and learn because they might be telling you something that you just don't know. They might be telling you, although they are being negative, telling you something that you can use to improve yourself. So let us take advantage of everything that comes forth that we in our experience take that which was negative and make it a positive and I'm positive that I love us thank you for listening this is your brother Talik Ibn Ra this was and is the Realities Temple on Earth